A key question for governments when considering a universal pension is affordability and how it can be sustained in the long term. The small island nation of Mauritius currently boasts the lowest poverty rate in Africa. Its long-standing pension scheme, which guarantees a basic minimum to people over 60, has contributed over the last 60 years to Mauritius's economic miracle, according to the IMF. You don't have to be rich, you don't have to be poor, you don't have to be middle class, but each one will have a pension. When the government decided to implement a pension in the 1950s, Mauritius was considered a low-income country. Life was very hard at that time. In the beginning, it was very hard. There was uh, no electricity, no water, and iron sheet houses. Incomes were low, and families were large. In the 1950s, despite a poor economy, the Mauritian government decided it needed to reduce poverty by implementing a national non-contributory pension. The older men and women were identified as a group of the population who were particularly vulnerable at this time. In those days, the family could barely eke out a living for themselves. So having to care for those who could not work was the burden on the family. This was a felt need at all levels, uh, let's say at all political levels. And therefore, there was always this call to introduce for the elderly people a form of pension. It was a recognition of the political system or the government of the day to they acknowledge this need and also somewhere acknowledge that this problem will escalate because it would impact upon the family. Social assistance to older people was seen as a necessary step to reducing the widespread poverty felt in Mauritius at that time. The government was committed at that time to reduce poverty. Even if it was negative growth rate there, people were basically were, were very poor at that time, definitely. But the, the government was committed to was committed to, to give them a pension even if it was like around 15 or 20 rupees per month, essentially to reduce the poverty level. Getting 15 rupees in those days and on a regular basis meant a lot given the meager income they were getting from working. The pension implemented in the 50s initially involved a means test which was abolished due to public resentment and recrimination. In 1958, the government made the pension universal. This universal non-contributory pension continues to play a critical role in poverty reduction today. All people need to have social protection, social services, because they have to work hard. And when a government happens to put up these social services with different schemes to elderly people, it is a sort of guarantee that a government can give to its working class, and this makes uh, a civilized society. Mauritius's universal non-contributory pension scheme has been sustained for over 50 years due to a combination of economic and political factors. The pension cost to the economy is, around, is expected to be around 2.3% of GDP. So it is a large share, but still manageable. Why it has been proved to be uh, manageable for the government? Because the economy has been growing uh, in terms of GDP growth and GDP per capita. There was, so to say, a lot of stability in the income of the country, and therefore we were able to predict the, our income and our expenditure, and we were able, therefore, to earmark what amount was needed for, for all aid pension. And there was also the political will I must uh, perhaps emphasize this. 
there were the political will across the political divide for the old age pension to continue. In terms of the direct implication of the elderly having an income at the end of the month, uh, it's in terms of consumption, uh, it will help them to consume better, to have a better standard of living. It helps them in a sense, and consumption, higher consumption has an impact on the economy for a number of multiplier effects. In terms of tax revenue as well, uh, taxing of, of in terms of taxing consumption, taxing uh, in terms of businesses as well. So this generate revenue which can ultimately finance the pension scheme. Many modern economies today depend on consumption and social protection system which helps sustain consumption, helps sustain economy. The universality of the scheme played a central role in sustaining political will. After the initial reform of the pension in 1958, there have been two other short periods when means testing was introduced and then converted back into a universal scheme, most recently in 2004. When they implemented that approach, it caused a lot of trauma to our people because suddenly they were given, you know, big circulars and formalities where they had to state how much money they have, whether they have money in bank, whether they own property, then government will decide. But that person is not qualified, this one will be qualified. It was very difficult to distinguish who are the wealthy people and who are the poor people. It takes a lot of energy and the end result may be unhappy for the pensioner. They are not satisfied. I should have got more, I've got 500 rupees less, I need to have 500 rupees more. So there's all this arbitration in there, if there's room for that. And in fact, this is one of the reasons why the means test was abolished. It's not because it's just costly, but because it was not always fair to everybody and didn't help to keep the poor out of poverty. The public popularity of the universal pension has played a key role in sustaining political support of the pension. We even uh, lobbied the, uh, the politician, polit the polit political people who are now who were in the opposition. And uh, they, we met them several times and uh, we had an over and over understanding with them that as soon as they will get into power, so uh, they will reintroduce the universal pension for everybody. And, 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 and fortunately, they won the election in 2005. And as soon as they won the election, after one or two weeks, so they just uh, said, OK, now it's over. Uh, the old system is over now. Now we are reintroducing the old the, the, the system where people, where everybody are reaching the age of 60, will get that universal pension. So, so, where, is, so where we are now? Since being re-implemented in 2005, Mauritius's universal pension scheme maintains a high approval rating among the government and Mauritians themselves. At the end of the day, it is preferable to pay small pension to everybody than to pay pensions to a targeted system which leaves out a big chunk of poor people. It shows government philosophy government philosophy in creating what we call an inclusive society. Despite a poor economic outlook in the past, Mauritius has been able to maintain its commitment to ensure the income security of all older men and women. Mauritius was uh, very much a low-income country. It was a monocrop economy dependent on king sugar and there was not much scope for economic development in those days so much so that some Nobel Prize winners said that Mauritius was a doomed country in those days. Uh, fortunately we proved them wrong.